So good morning, happy Mother's Day to all those who mother us. We're glad you're here, whether in person, online, or later on YouTube. We're always glad to have you with us. Let us enter more deeply into worship as we listen to our prelude. Thank you, Joanne. Just a few announcements today. I'll be in the church office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, a few hours this week. Trustees, I've scheduled a meeting for Thursday night at 7, but I think I have to change that because choir started, and I forgot that when I booked that, and Deb and I can't be at choir and at the meeting, so we'll see what we can do about that. But there's, Trudy, you're a new trustee. We're having a meeting. <laughs> uh, I'll get you more details later. Session is meeting next Monday, the 16th at 7. The plan is to have these start being in church, but we'll see how things go. We are all invited to join with our Muslim friends who have been uh, meeting in our hall for some of their prayers both Friday afternoons and during Ramadan, and they wanted to have a potluck with us to celebrate Eid, which is the ending of Ramadan. And uh, so they've asked us to gather with them on the 15th after worship. Uh, we'll be here in the hall and we'll start about noon, just in case your minister runs a little over. And uh, they'll come and join us and we'll get a chance to know each other. And um, they have an Eid gift they want to share with us. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but 
that's their gift giving time and so um, they would like to give us a little something to celebrate Eid and to say thank you for all that we've been able to provide them. Don't let the food stop you from coming. Um, there will be plenty, so if you're not sure what to bring, just bring yourself. Um, if you really would like to bring something, then bring whatever you would normally bring. And um, just bring it with the ingredients listed so that everybody knows if they can eat it, which also helps for those who have dairy or gluten or other issues as well anyway. Um, so don't let the food stop you. Come. Uh, they just want to get to know us. And uh, kids are welcome, just so you know, because uh, there's usually a fair number of them as well when they gather. So it's just a chance for our two congregations to start to get to know each other even more. If you've missed anything, our YouTube channel is still active. Bible study meets on Wednesday mornings if anyone wants to join us. Take out dinner, that's the one with the chicken parmigiana and uh, other things, including chocolate cake, or white if you want it, but um, May 11th. And I understand Marlene, you will be getting in touch with folks as to when they can have their food. Is that Marlene's in charge of when you actually get your food. And of course, we are back to in-person. We're not demanding you wear a mask, but we are encouraging folks to still wear a mask and to respect social distancing to keep us all as safe as possible. Uh, I do know for a fact my dad got COVID because he went someplace where they weren't doing that. Masks work. And we still have our Zoom option and our YouTube as well, and we'll keep doing that so that folks can participate in whatever manner they are most comfortable. And as well, now that we're back together, nut and scent free to keep us all safe. The minute for mission that was in the bulletin this week is about support for Ukrainian refugees, and you can do some of that through our Gifts with Vision program. You can uh, check out the national website of the church, and uh, that's one more way we can help our friends in the Ukraine. And a thank you to those who continue to give so that we can continue to provide a ministry. Thank you. And now. Easter brings a change in attitude and perspective. From that of inaction to faithful action, renewal of community, all things are possible when the risen Christ is in our midst. The season of Easter is a time when we are ready for change. The Christ light is a reminder of all the possibilities the new life of Easter can bring. Our call to worship is a little different and includes a candle lighting. The candle lighting is dedicated to mothers and all who take on the role of mother in our lives. It's not just the one who gave us birth. Especially in the church, we are all family and many contribute to that time. So let us join together. For mothers of every form and kind everywhere. Bless them with your love, O oh God. As they cradle us with care, bless them with your love, O oh God. Remind us to help them out. Bless them with your love, O oh God. To work together, never shout. 
Bless them with your love. For mothers of every gender and connection everywhere, God is with us. Don't despair. Bless them with your love. Let us pray together. Loving God, you call us to be in relationship not just with you, but with one another. Relationships can be hard. We try to be present with one another when we would rather be alone, love another when we are hurting. And at times we forget to listen, notice, reach out and care. You are the source of all life and your nurturing love gives us the energy to love one another. As we were formed in the womb, we were made in your image. May this gathering of your church reflect your image in the world, today and every day. Amen. And our hymn of praise, number 213 in our hymn books, Rejoice, the Lord is King. from Acts this morning has the Apostle Peter visiting a coastal region to the north of Jerusalem. He's near what we would know as modern-day Tel Aviv. And there he meets people who are already Christians, followers of the way. And in Lydda, he's been instrumental in healing a paralyzed man. He has said to him, Ananias, Jesus Christ heals you. And the man was healed. Lydda is near Joppa. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard Peter was there sent two men to him with a request. Please come to us without delay. 
So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and he prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Our hymn before story time, 412, This is the Day. I have to get out of the way. So we're all going to rejoice. time. I, I'm still not convinced that you weren't going faster and faster on that one either, Joanne. <laughs> Just tripping over my tongue. So, what's in the box? Well, what I really wanted to put in the box probably wouldn't have fit, so I had to adapt. Because you know how good I am at that. So, what I put in the box was Sandy, our little shepherd. And you'll know that he, notice that he has in his hand a shepherd's crook. Big staff's got a hook on the end, because I probably could have used one with the choir earlier, because you can hook them around the neck of the sheep and bring them back where they should be. But I also think every mother might need one, don't you? Now, I have to share with you a little story because Stephen's here, so, you know, it's funnier when I tell it in front of him. <laughs> when Stephen was little, or littler, he, of course, would go with me to church every Sunday morning. 
And on so the Sundays that were Mother's Day Sundays, everybody would come up to Stephen and go, so did you make your mom breakfast in bed? <laughs> and Stephen would look at them with this confused look on his face. And as he got older, the look was less confused and more, are you out of your mind? <laughs> because his response was, it's Sunday. My mother is always the first one up. She's working. So she doesn't get breakfast in bed. But that was what everybody thought. And I couldn't even have gotten Stephen out of bed in time to make me breakfast if I'd had a crook. <laughs> the story I just read about the woman named Tabitha or Dorcas, she, it doesn't say she was a mother, but it said that she made clothes and did things for other people. Sounds a lot like a mom to me, doesn't it? Doing things for others, looking after others, sounds a lot like a mom. Well, we have lots of different moms. You may not realize this. Because it's not just the mom that maybe you're sitting with right now, or the mom you're going to call later or go and see later, but often the women around you are also like your mom. And if you grew up in a small town like me, which Newcastle really still is, every other woman in town knew what you were up to. And they were all mothers. And I could get in trouble more ways than you can imagine, and more than once because all the mothers that were around. And we have it in church too. In church, all the women who gather around help us grow in faith. And that's what mothers are there to help us do, grow and learn and become the people we're meant to be. And so in church, everyone mothers us, men and women. And in some families, there isn't a mom right there. It's dad who does mom's work. So we need to celebrate everybody who helps us learn and grow, be healthy and strong and become the people we're called to be. Because all of them are moms. And they all need a shepherd's crook sometimes to keep us in line. <laughs> Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite those who are going out for Faith in Motion to head out now. Whichever door is closest to you, don't try to come across the front. And while they're all doing that, I'll invite Hope to come and get herself situated at the piano. And I hope you don't mind, but we're not going to play with the camera because we may never get it back where it goes. Take it with you. Yep. Oh, Trudy, you have no idea how much we've all missed that. Our special music this morning is Hope Pasco playing Mayflower.
Thank you, Hope. Our responsive psalm this morning is a very familiar psalm. It's Psalm 23. It's on page 749 in the back of Voices United, and it's refrain two that we are using as our response. Give you a minute, I can hear pages still flipping. God is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall lack. You, God, make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside peaceful waters. You revive my spirit. You guide me in right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. Your rod and your staff are my comfort. You spread a table for me in the sight of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in God's house my whole life long. Our gospel lesson comes from John's gospel this morning. This is set at the time of Hanukkah, when Jews commemorate the rededication of the temple after it was desecrated. Jesus has earlier told people that he is divine and that he existed before Abraham. Well, what he does witnesses to his oneness with God. Only those who believe can truly understand his messiahship. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? Are you the Messiah? Tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our hymn is Simon, Simon the Fisherman, page 597, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. I'm not asking you to sing all five verses this morning. Leave out the Mary and Martha verse. It's the easiest way to remember it. Thank you. 
maybe two of that kind of quickness wasn't a good idea this morning. If you all fall asleep now during the sermon, I'll understand why you're all out of breath. It was a test for the choir. They just got back and you know. failed miserably. Except for Hazel May. There we go. Good girl, Hazel May. So, I have to make a confession this morning. I know you'd love it when the minister makes confessions. I have an issue with the scriptures sometimes. I need more information. I want to know what happens next. We hear about people and we hear these amazing things that happen, but we never get any follow-up. You know, it's like you get the big news story and then you never find out what happened. Dorcas, Tabitha, whichever you want to call her, gets raised back to life by Peter. And we never hear about her again. We hardly hear anything about her other than she did good works and made clothes for others and was one of the widows and beyond that we know nothing about her and you know i like to know more about the women of the bible i would love to stand up here and tell you all about dorcas maybe even be dorcas so you get a sense of who she was but i don't know very little is written about dorcas but on a day like today I think we can make some assumptions, maybe. Now, those who came to the Lenten Bible study know we should never make assumptions about what happens in our scriptures, right? You can't see Vicky's face, and that's probably a good thing. She, she gets annoyed with me at times, because I keep saying, well, what about? Because we think that widows had no voice, and no real place in society. And yet, as we listen to this story about Dorcas and her friends, it's very clear that they're making a difference in Joppa. She's called a disciple in her own right. So she's a faithful follower doing the things that Jesus calls us to do. So she had to perhaps have had some kind of resources or at least have a benefactor of some kind. And she could quietly do her work, but perhaps because she was so important to the work, that's why they called Peter. She was a force to be reckoned with, I have a feeling. And it's not what we usually think of when we hear of widows in the Bible. But if you think about the widows we all know, the same is true. Some have few resources and little family or support around them. Others have great resources and lots of people around them and a voice of their own. And no matter which one, they do their best to make a difference as a faithful follower of the way. Dorcas is one of these people. Dorcas is one of the people who would have been a parent to those in this new religion, if you will. These people trying to understand a new way of being. That's what mothers do. We often think that women don't have much of a voice. But think about who does most of the raising of our children. Who do you go to for comfort? All of those things. No, mothers may not be the ones standing up front. (laughs) There are exceptions. They may not be the ones standing up front. But they're in there behind, making a difference. Dorcas was making a difference. To the point that when Dorcas died, the community was distraught enough to call on Peter. 
It doesn't say why they wanted Peter to come and be with them. But they wanted Peter with them. Well, did they want Peter to come hoping that he'd perform a miracle? Like he had just done with the paralyzed man in Lydda? Did they really think resurrection was a possibility? Or were they looking to find someone who had greater faith than them to come and sit with them in their grief and to remind them that there was something more, that Easter was true, that even though Dorcas wasn't with them anymore, it didn't mean that Dorcas's work was done. Peter performed a miracle beyond anything I think anyone was expecting. But he also came to be with those people. It meant Dorcas had more work to do. Always, you seem to get raised up and you got more work to do. But Dorcas had more work to do Dorcas would continue to be an example to others about how to be a disciple. How to live the way Jesus was sharing. And if that isn't a powerful position, I don't know what is. She was an example. She, in her own way, was a shepherd. Jesus says the, shepherd know his, the sheep know his voice as their shepherd, and they follow. Think about whose voice you recognize and follow. When you pick up the phone, do you immediately know who it is? I know that when many of you call me, you're surprised how many voices I do know without you telling me who it is. But when you pick up the phone... Do you know the voice? Or when you make a call, does somebody know your voice when you call? We're all part of something together. And the voices call to one another to be faithful, to follow the example that Jesus set and called us to follow. It doesn't matter who we are or where we are. A widow or not, as long as we're a disciple, as long as we're being faithful and showing others how to be faithful, we're living the call. And others will follow our voice because they will learn that's the way to go. So remember, others may hear your voice and follow because they know your voice. May they be following the faithful way. May Dorcas be your guide. Amen. <coughs> Our God is the God of awe and wonder. We are gifted with love and blessings beyond anything we could ask or imagine. How do we say thank you for all that we've received. We commit ourselves to live out love by sharing all that we have and all that we are with a world that God loves beyond limit. And so, we give. pray together. These gifts are offered with new life, that we may help bring joy to the downhearted, hope to the sorrowing, courage to the powerless, and love to those who need it. Bless these gifts, O God, 
and bless the work that comes through them. Amen. And now we know there are many needs in our world. We named a couple closer to home before we began. But there are many that lie upon your hearts. There are many <coughs> that are in our heads. All of those prayers we call together and lay before God, asking that God take care of things and if we are needed to call us. Let us pray. We thank you, loving friend, for encouragement and fellowship far beyond our dearest expectation. At morning, noon, and night, you are perfect grace and joy. You are compassion. Our cup overflows. You are our hope. Our cup overflows. You are our truth, and our cup overflows. You are our life, and our cup overflows. You are our freedom, our cup overflows. You are our happiness, and our cup overflows. Holy and most wonderful is your name, far above all other names on earth and in heaven. God of boundless energy and unqualified love, help us and all people to enter into the joy of your purposes, not limiting our expectations to past failures, but opening up to the optimism of eternal life. We pray for your blessing on those who are physically or mentally challenged, yet who live a full and creative life. We pray for the salvation of those who appear sound in body and mind, yet are handicapped by a selfish, cramped, and boring outlook. We pray your blessing on those who extend the boundaries of love, forgiving, and liberating those who sin against them. We pray for the salvation of those who lose the zest for life, under the sour influence of anger, jealousy, resentment, and bitterness. We pray your blessing on those who know Christ as a profound happiness to be shared by deed and word through all the common scenes of life. We pray for the salvation of those who have fallen into pious exclusiveness, becoming self-righteous and judgmental. We pray your blessing on those who, in grave illness, still believe in providence and who, through deep sorrow, continue to believe in life. We pray for the salvation of those who, when ill or injured, are in fear and when in sorrow are in despair. We pray your blessing on those politicians who, when in government, sincerely pray to be led by your spirit of truth. We pray for the salvation of those who, wanting to rule others, sell their souls for power and prestige and grow shameless in hiding the truth. We pray your blessing on devoted Christians around us in this congregation, for whom abundant life has long been a reality. We pray for the salvation of those who, for reasons they cannot understand, are haunted by doubts and anxieties that inhibit the life of faith. We pray for all those who have mothered us. And we pray for those near and far, known and unknown, who lie upon our hearts.
To you, precious source of eternal life, to your gracious wisdom we bring these meager but sincere prayers. Through Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I know that the uh, microphone is not picking up for those who are on Zoom with us, but maybe some of you who are here in the building can hear the noise coming from the hall. Yes. <laughs> Prayers can be answered. And it's wonderful to hear that noise of faith in motion yet again. Our closing hymn, number 260 in our hymn books, God Who Gives to Life Its Goodness. we go, let us remember, we are all part of God's family. We are loved and precious in God's sight. We are blessed, chosen, and called to go forth to love and nurture God's world in return. And may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep each one of you, now and always. Amen. Amen. invite those who are on Zoom with us, as they are willing and able, to unmute their microphones so that together the people may say, Hallelujah! Amen!